Hi friends, it's Marie and today we are Nuno felting this really cute, what I think is like a winter essential. It's a head warmer slash ear warmer and close fit cowl. In like 30 seconds it could go from warming your ears or keeping the wind out of your ears, whether you're skiing or dog walking or grocery shopping. And then if you just want to wear it as a neck warmer indoors or anywhere, then you just squish it down and it's ready to go. You can scrunch it up, throw it in your pocket, and you can even make these reversible. They're super lightweight, and when I wear them, it feels like I forget that I even have them on during the day. So the design is really up to you. We're going to make one just like that one today. This one is similar, but the difference is that it's made with 16 micron merino top instead of 19, and I used black merino instead of gray. On the inside, this one is just black silk. So it's a Nuno felt with a base layer of silk inside. And then this is a brown one that I made with no silk base layer. This is just wool and embellishment fibers on the inside or on side two. And then side one, I used all kinds of silk fabrics, upcycled silk fabrics and embellishment fibers. Super easy to make, great beginner project, great skills builder too. And man, these would make awesome gifts for boys, girls, women, men, however you want to design them. So let's look at what you need to make your own. For our project today, I'm going to be using fibers and fabrics similar to the one worn by my assistant, Gloria. And those are, we're starting with a very fine 19.5 micron merino top. Start with one ounce. We're going to break it down. You'll probably use just over a half an ounce, but this will be your backup. I'm going to use some silk hankies in both black and gray, and then some sari silk waste. And that's all that I'm going to use in the embellishment fibers. We are using a silk habitai, which is about a five mommy or mome, however you like to say it. And then some upcycled silk fabrics from tunics, dresses, tops, skirts, what, uh, scarves, whatever you get. Mine are all upcycled from clothing. And this is a mystery scarf. I don't even know what the fabric is, but I have tested it and know that I can get my fibers to migrate through it. And this is a fun one to use. So that's all you need for fiber and fabrics. For today's project, we're going to be wet felting over a resist. We are working with our thin resist. It's a very thin foamy material. It's very flexible. You're going to want to cut yours to shape. So let's look at that. I've cut mine into a dome pattern and that's because this project was created while working on another project and I sort of had this aha moment. But if you make it this dome shape, you'll be able to use it for another project later. It's 24 inches from here to here, and it's 15 inches from here to here. Now that is based on a 30% shrinkage in this direction, and it's gonna shrink, mine I've been shrinking between 40 and 50% in this direction. This little piece was felted on this resist. So uh, we're gonna do our layout approximately 17 inches tall and all the way around this resist. If shrinkage is new to you, we've thrown up some math over here onto the side so you can look at that, or you can grab the PDF pattern and use that as your guide where I'm gonna actually, in the, the pattern, you I'll talk you through all the steps that we're gonna do today on the video. Okay, so just a quick look at the tools you need for today's project. I'm gonna refer this as to my as my half table nano felt setup because I find I keep going back to the same setup and it doesn't take much and uh, doing half table projects is really really fun. So what we have here is a pull noodle and it's just cut to a half so it's nice to have a full and a half. I have a dowel. This towel has been, dowel has been in my felting closet for, I don't know, going on 20 years. It's just a one inch dowel. I have a thicker one too. I like a grippy mat for my table. I'll show you where that goes. A couple of towels, a ball brass, a single piece of mesh to go over the entire project, some water and soap. My soap is always in there kind of getting the water soapy while I'm getting set up. The water is room temperature. We have bubble wrap 
big enough for your entire project to fit on. And this is our small bubble. And then we have thin plastic sheeting. You'll want two layers to cover your project. All of these items, including the soap and more, we have a wet felting tools bundle for if you want to just grab that, or you can get these items a la carte if you don't have them the next time you're shopping with us. So we're going to set up our table and get ready to lay out. Before we begin laying out our fiber, we want to divide our one ounce into smaller increments. These increments are going to be small enough that really help us control how we lay out the fiber. We want really thin, wispy, even tufts of fiber because we're going to do a very thin layout. So start with one ounce and the first thing we're going to do is you can just divide this one in half widthwise. So now I have a half ounce and a half ounce. We're going to use probably a half ounce or just over for this entire project. So I want to divide this half ounce into two. Each one of these is going to be for one side. I'm going to take this quarter ounce now and divide it into an eighth. So this is what I'm going to use to draft from and you could go even thinner if you were more comfortable. I like to make little bumps or buns and set those aside. Do that for side one and two. And then with the extra half ounce that you set aside, we want to also make little small buns of at least half of it to pull from in case you need any extra on one of the sides. So this is a half ounce. We divide it down into a quarter and then down into an eighth and then one of these will be our reserve so that if you run out of fiber on one side, you can pull from that. Once your workstation is ready and your fiber is divided, it's time to begin our layout. So we're going to want to put our silk scarf over our resist. There is an option to wet your silk so that it stays in place before you begin your first layer of layout. Uh, and I include that in our written pattern directions and that is what I usually do. In this case, I left it dry. It's just a little bit easier for me not to fuss with my hands on camera, wet, dry, wet, dry. So if you want to dampen your silk with your ball bras before you start your fiber layout, that's totally cool and it's a pretty common thing to do. Our wool is divided here, side two and side one closest to me. These are all of my embellishment fibers. I have my water and my ball brass, my mesh, and some scissors if I want to cut my fabric. I have my silk wrapped all the way around my resist. You want a gentle overlap. It could be three quarters of an inch, half an inch. Um, you don't want it too little. And if your fiber is, your fabric is thick, you don't want it to be too bulky. But this fabric is so thin, um, it's just a gauze weight 3.5 mommy, so it's not even going to matter. The fiber layout pattern we're doing primarily is a herringbone. I'm going to show you how that works. We'll get up close and personal and then I'll just finish. We're going to cover this entire side with wool. The first thing we're going to do is trim the top and the bottom with just a perpendicular layer of fiber. So just like this. I like to hide those edges and just have them melt into the wool. Thin, thin, wispy. And look, you can take this and divide it down even thinner. You want this to stay flat and even and to be able to pull off little, tiny, thin, even wisps. Let some fibers trail over the side for wrapping around to side two. Okay, so now let's look at the herringbone. We're going to come in uh, just a little bit closer in just a moment. What we're going to do is one diagonal row and an another diagonal row going the opposite direction with a gentle overlap. So we're going to start here and go a little over the edge and just do this entire diagonal layer. Sticking to my hands today.
I'm overlapping this top row just a little bit. And remember, you want this to be like nice and thin, 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 lightweight and wispy. If it gets out of control on you like this, just always square it up. You can save little bits for filling in holes later or you can just use them right where you are. Okay, so once you have this layer all in place how you want it, um, then we're gonna go the opposite direction. So I'm gonna get in just a little bit more close. And we're gonna fill in the entire side this way. So do what's most comfortable. You can trail in, you can trail this wispy end up over that one, but overlap about 50% and just go in the opposite angle. It's easier for me to put a blunt end to a wispy end, but some people like to put the wispy ends together. So for me, this is a little bit easier. This is a very thin layout. We're choosing it because it's gonna give you a really nice flexibility and drape in your finished piece. So we're gonna cover the whole first side in this manner. So permit us to fast forward for the rest of this. Once your first layer is covered with wool, then we're gonna add our design layer. But first we want to get this entire layer wet and push the soap and water in so that we get all of our fibers laying nice and flat before we put our designs on top. However you are comfortable, you can either put water right on top of your fiber, use something gentle like the ball brass, or you can use mesh as a barrier just to keep from splashing the fiber out of its place. Mesh is really nice because you can just wet right through it. And all we want to do is press all of the air out and the soap and water in. If we get this nice and wet, then it will also help wet our design elements. If you have particularly thick fabrics or silks or even fibers like a sari silk waste or something, it's nice to get that water happening from both sides. So this will help us wet all of those. At this point, you want to press, but do not rub. We don't want to felt anything. Okay, once it's wet and you can feel it's wet, notice I didn't smear, I only pressed. Smearing tends to push things and water tends to push things. So just peel back your mesh at a real gentle layer, a real gentle angle so that the fiber doesn't stick to it. And then we're gonna add our design. Now, you can, what we can do actually, you could fold this fiber underneath to start, but I would rather do that when we flip over. So we wanna start adding our design elements and wherever you're adding fabrics, allow them to stick off onto side two. You don't wanna have a real obvious seam down one side. So I am going to use this nice thick habitat. I'm gonna just cut it to a smaller size. So let's put that here. 
This is going to pucker nicely. It resists, uh, it resists the fiber, so that gives you that nice puckery texture. And then I'm going to pair that with, uh, this is a recycled, upcycled tunic, really, that I have just gotten tons of mileage out of. And I like to kind of switch up those angles sometimes. So this was a big sharp angle. This one I'm going to change and let it be a little bit different. And this particular piece right here, oh, I see I still have a, I have a seam. Get rid of all seams, um, any seams or anything really bulky, like this is a surged uh, hem. So get rid of all of that. And your shapes don't all have to be square. We're going to fill in, so you can even have these funky, these funky peaks. So I'm going to let that happen. And you want that to just extend off the side. You can pucker it. We're not going to get real fancy with our designs today. We're just going to be adding these fun elements. So here's this piece. I'm going to let this piece just live completely on this side. And then this fabric, my mystery fabric, I'm going to cut a little slice of it. Mixing up your patterns can really add a lot of interest. So notice all these, these different patterns coming into play, and it's going to make it real interesting um, overall. Leave some gaps for wool to show through and also to add some different kind of embellishments. And having them different sizes can be really interesting as well. Now, wherever you have fabrics that may tend to resist uh, the fiber migration, like a really thick, this is an open weave, but it was a mystery fiber and these would be real obvious ends. I'll just zoom in a little bit. These would be real obvious ends. We want to cover those with wool. So I'm going to get a little bit closer as we add more design elements. Okay, and I will come this direction just a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so have a tie is really thick and this would be real obvious, could leave like trailing out fibers. So I'm going to cover these with wool. So use your extra bits that you set aside. And I'm just going to frame them with a tiny bit of fiber. It's just going to help it melt into the background and not be such an obvious line. And it doesn't take much. You just want to kind of trap down anything that might have a challenge migrating with wool. That could also be a mohair or a ribbon or something that, you know, might be a little bit of trouble. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing with the habitat. Gauze weight, uh, chiffon weight usually won't need this extra bit of trimming. You can do it if you want to as a design or to hide something that seems like maybe is a little more obvious than you want to be. Just put a real thin layer of wool right over it. If you've made a test sample with your fabrics, then that might be telling for how you want to operate in this phase. Like you could make a test of the same fabrics um, and not anchor them down with any wool and use that test to dictate how you treat it in this, you know, final project. Okay, sticking to me, which is always the case. When you're wet, it wants to stick to you. Okay, so we've covered those uh, important lines with some, I have another hem there I want to get rid of. I didn't realize I hadn't gotten this ready. There. Okay, so now I'm going to fill in some of these dark areas with some of my embellishment fibers. This is sari silk waste, and it is recycled saris that have then been dyed and shredded and then dyed, and it's really crazy stuff. It's better to cut it, and I also like to just treat it as some extreme texture, so you can really stretch it out and clump it down, and it's going to have a real nice sheen when you felt it. Cutting it's best when you get to where you want to be done with it. So I'm going to pile that on there. 
I'm also going to pile in a similar color silk hanky. Hankies are interesting beasts because they, they're, you know, they're made from silk cocoons and you can clump them or you can stretch them. So the gray ones I'm going to clump and this one I'll just clump right here. Now you could also add in here Tessa, uh, viscose, some more sheen, anywhere you want, bamboo, uh, whatever kind of silks you have, silk fibers you have. I'm just going to bring these in here and then I'm going to stretch some black hankies across the design. So hankies, you, it's easy to grab too many but just find a little edge and then just rip them apart. I like the veining you get when this is stretched but wet. So you can stretch it out a bit first or wet it first. I'm always challenged with hankies, but they're so fun and irresistible. And then I'm gonna wet it a bit. Okay, so now it's kind of wet. I'm gonna just plop part of it down right here and hold on to it and pull. It's gonna help me get some nice big veins in my design where it kind of strings together and then pull, I'm gonna pull it this way too. I like when I have this, you know, stark white over this dark design to kind of mask it a little bit with something like a hanky stretched over the top. And you don't have to do it everywhere or even do this at all. This is just kind of a fun thing. Okay. And I don't want that to look square, so you can also cut it so that you can change up those lines. And this one too. Okay, so a real, just a real simple design there. It's just gonna be a little bit interesting. And now we're actually ready to start flattening and wetting all of these design elements out and then um, jump to side two. soap has been in here the entire time and it's a good time to take it out once it's super slimy. All I want is all of these design elements to be fully wet, flattened, and have soap in them. Depending on how fine your fiber is, I'm going to say don't pre-rub this side. Most of our felting is gonna happen in the rolling action, but if your fibers are super fine and you start rubbing this side, then you're likely to felt the fiber to the fiber and not give it time to bind to the fabric. So don't rub at this point. Let's just start felting by rolling once we've completed side two. So we're gonna fast forward side two um, after the first stages. So peel back your mesh. And you're gonna put your second layer of plastic in place now. Wet this side a little bit. Your hands probably are still a little soapy. I'm not using any pressure, I'm just trying to get the air bubbles out of the plastic. I've already flattened a piece underneath and now we're gonna flip the whole thing over. Okay. Just a little point to note here on this side. What we wanna do here, let me see if I can back up a little, just a little bit for you. 
Okay, what we want to do on this side is we're going to bring the fibers over first, but leave the silks in place. So wherever you have wool coming over from side two, and look, you can sh uh, scooch your silk just like this, which is one of the magics of wetting it. You can put way more silk down than you need and create some fun crinkles, especially if you use something like a margolon, where every wrinkle just creates pure magic. But you want to bring the wool over first and leave the fabrics laying on the table. That's the only thing to do. And then once you get this side covered with wool, then we will bring these design elements over and add any more design elements. So we're going to go ahead and lay out this fiber on side two, just like we did on side one. Fast forward. If any little fibers have migrated off the side just from your layout, then just gently lift your resist and just tuck them around to back to side one. So these are fibers that we just we just put down. Just let them wrap around to back to side one. Okay, then we're gonna pull our design elements over to this side. You don't have to stretch them taut. Just get them to be snug up against the resist. Once you have side one and side two all laid out, now you should have your project and a plastic sandwich. So you've got your bubble wrap on the table and you've got a sheet of plastic on the bottom and top. Now it's time to roll. We're going to um, start by rolling the sides and we're gonna give favoritism to those sides, meaning we're going to put more rolls on what will be the sides of the cowl before we tackle the top and bottom. Um, so I'm gonna show you how we roll and then we're gonna give you the counts for how to do the rolls. We're going to turn our project so the dome is to the right. I like to use a rolling towel, especially on a lightweight project, rather than tie it up. So I'm going to have my towel underneath and going long ways. Now the first thing we're going to do is wrap up just the project. So all layers of plastic and the bubble wrap. You're going to roll without putting a bunch of pressure. So it might want to buckle. If it does, just give it a little shake and let it go loose. You can see why you want to have your plastic and bubble bigger than your project. Don't squish it down yet. We'll be able to roll it tighter as we go. So you want it in a complete little package here. And then I take this part of the towel over and kind of lock it down underneath the roll. We are going to do what I call the rock and roll. For 25 times, give it a quarter turn on its axis and um, continue in that path for 100, direct, 100 rotations. Unroll and repeat for 200 from each side. Here we go.
That's 25. Give it a quarter turn and then do 25 more. After you do four sets of 25, unroll it and repeat for another four sets. That'll be 200 from this side. After rolling from this side edges on both top and bottom, or side one and side two, 200 times, now we're gonna roll in 100s. We're gonna do top to bottom, bottom to top, and then at least one side. You'll start to see, you might your project might start bowing on the resist or shrinking on the resist pretty soon, but let's do sets of 100 now, but we're gonna include the top and bottom as well. As I'm rolling my sets of 100 from all edges, both side one and side two, I really am starting to increase my pressure. I'm not straining my body or anything like that. I'm just using a little more press, downward pressure from my hands. And remember that you want your roll to stay round. So always re-rolling it if you need to. But the pool noodle should help you keep it nice and in shape. So we've completed our rolls with our pool noodle and our pool noodle is spongy so it helps us push from both sides, our hands on one side, the bubble wrap underneath and the pool noodles in between. So we're kind of mashing all those layers together. After you do your sets of 200 and then your sets of 100, we're going to roll just in the bubble wrap. Um, and gently, but we want to see how much the fabric is bowing onto the bubble wrap because if we can get it to shrink enough to bow, then we can take the resist out and really get down to felting it more. So we're gonna roll just in the bubble wrap and see how we're doing on our shrinkage. So roll the project up and roll it snugly, but don't don't cause it to buckle. And then put your towel, sort of like your locking layer, back over it. And just do 100 gentle rolls. Do your 20, you know, do your rock and roll turning on 25. And then we're gonna check it after 100. So this is the telling part right here. Let's see how much I can I can show this to you. Can you see that this is tinting up? It's causing the bubble wrap to curl. The bubble wrap is curling within, the, uh, not the bubble wrap, the resist is curling within this. So that means this is shrinking in to such a degree that it wants to buckle. So I don't want to leave it on there, but it is still a little bit fragile. We could probably you know, mess these fibers up if we wanted to. So we're gonna take it, take the resist off, but leave our plastic in place. And I'm going to roll more up and down with uh, just the plastic. And then in a minute, we'll bring in the dowel. So we'll take the resist off. And it's a good time to refold it so that something other than what has been the edge is the edge. Now notice none of our silks aren't puckering or anything. We have a lot of shrinkage to go, but we're gonna get a lot of that just with our rolling. So first we're gonna roll, we rolled uh, on the side without the pool noodle. We're gonna roll all four edges with just the bubble wrap. And then we'll bring in our our dowel for a little more strength. So continue your rolls of 100. Okay, I've just rolled side one without the pool noodle 100 times. And what we wanna do is separate the layers. 
So you don't want them to felt together. I mean, it's not going to felt shut, but nonetheless, you want to get in here because the fibers are going to keep migrating. So you just want to go in and separate that. In fact, I'm going to take away the bottom plastic right now. Just work on the bubble wrap. Just separate this and then refold it. In fact, mine feels a little, it's a little wet, but it's okay. Sometimes I want it to be a little more dry. But we are just going to keep rolling. So this is, you can reposition it, and we're going to roll. I'm going to bring in the dowel now. Even though I only did side one. I really like rolling with the dowel. I don't know why. It's just a nice, a nice pressure. And we're going to roll again. We just keep rolling from all four edges an even number of times. And I still use my towel. But now I'm really going to press. And increase my speed. Okay, I've been rolling my piece in my dowel, and what I want to do is look at the progress of the shrinkage and also the fiber migration. Um, so we're gonna try and get up close, and you're gonna wanna get up close to your piece as well. What we're looking for is that the fiber migration is happening through the other side and that all of our design elements are laying down and in place. We're not gonna see a great amount of shrinkage right now, but we're definitely gonna see some. So here's our piece. We're starting to get, and you can see a little bit of buckling here on the habitat. It's probably hard to see because it's wet and dark. We definitely have some shrinkage happening. Um, so we're down to 13 inches across and um, well at about say 12 inches this way and I think we started closer to 16 inches this way and 15 inches across. So if we turn the piece inside out and you, if you look at yours really close, you should be able to see some of those fibers coming through. Now my fibers are gray on a black silk so it's really easy to see that. What we want to do is start folding it now, and it's not super wet. I have given myself a new bucket of hot, hot water, and I'm actually just going to plunge the whole thing in there. You can tell as I'm handling my piece that I have a solid fabric, and you could go around and check the design elements of your piece and see how you're doing. Make sure that you're not able to pull the fibers up. You can also felt some by hand through your mesh. You can add soap and water to your mesh. I find circles are just amazing for felting stuff rather than just backsy forcey to go in circles and really get everything to kind of play together. And now we're also just adding some soap back into the project. So rub some if you want. I'm going to encourage you to roll the project some on itself and you can turn it inside out and roll it too before we get to throwy with it. Some, you might want to throw it for texture like I've been doing for mine. But I want to caution you if you're new to not rush that step because if you're a little too rough with your piece before it's quite, quite ready, that's when you're really going to make it fuzzy. You're just roughing up the fibers too much and what we want is them to interlock really well um, before we kind of toss it around a bit. So let's fold it a little bit more and um, you can even just roll it on itself. And uh, don't go too far and, you know, may maybe in any one direction. If you want to roll just on your grippy mat, that's fine too. I don't want to roll just on my towel. Some people like to roll just in their towel, and you can do that at some point, but the towel will tend to want to grab onto the fibers, and I don't want it to grab on and pull my fibers towards the towel. That's why you also don't really want like an unvarnished wood right on your fiber. The wood tends to grab. If you have one side that seems a little bigger or longer than you want it, you might like it asymmetrical, but you can just take that edge and roll it up. 
and I really feel like mine is ready is ready for just some wadding and rolling and I'm just going to be gentle with it what I'm doing at this point is I am just letting the fibers get a little more willy-nilly as we have been rolling we've also been pressing and keeping everything really uniform but at this point I want to get a little texture into my piece so that's why I just kind of wad it up and mush it around. I also like to, this is, I call this wadding in my hands. And you can toss, and toss tends to, and I'm just bouncing it. I'm not throwing it hard. I'm not doing anything really overly aggressive. I'm just kind of pouncing it a little bit and letting the fibers just get to their own little natural state. So I'm gonna continue rolling mine, and you can turn it inside out as well. I'm gonna heat it up one more time. I don't want it too wet, but I just wanna warm it up. I'm going for about 10 and a half inches in the width, and the height, I'm pretty flexible. They've been between I don't know, eight and a half and ten, depending on how high I started, how much I shrunk, I scrunched the silk. But we're already starting to get some really fun textures in here. And just refold it every time or two so that nothing starts to feel like a particular edge. So I've only been treating it for just a few moments. Um, so let's measure our shrinkage. Already, this is down to 11, where a moment ago it was about, I think it was about 13. And this one is about 10 here to 11 here. If you want this not to be asymmetrical, well then just go after it. And we would call that spot fulling. If you just full or agitate somehow one area to coax it in. Anywhere you want it to be more wide, you can just pull it. So see how fast that responded. And you can refold it and go again. So remember not to over shrink it and, and to shrink it enough. Like if you want to wear it as an ear warmer, then you want it to be snug enough against your head that it doesn't just fall down so and not overly tight that it's uncomfortable so mine I go about 10 and a half although my head is about 21 and a half it gives it just enough stretch you can shrink it down just a little bit more so that you stretch it to fit you or whomever's going to wear it So now what we've been doing here for the last few minutes is called the fulling stage where you're just further shrinking everything and um, just getting the, the felt to shrink and basically get tighter. It all seems like the same thing and in a way it is, but technically it's the fulling stage. Okay, I'm going to go for one more measurement. And we're still at about 11 and at about 10 now already here. So I'm going to keep shrinking this direction and you keep working on yours. I have worked mine just honestly about five minutes more and I'm down to my 10.5 width, which was my goal. And then the height here is just, you know, it varies between nine inches and 10 inches. And I don't have any that are 10 inches long. I think most of them are eight and a half or so. So I kind of like that. It's a little bit different. So what we're gonna do now 
is we are going to rinse all of the soap out and I'm going to put it in a little bath of just submerge it in water, just room temperature water with a splash of vinegar while I clean up and then we'll block it. So I always just let it soak while I clean up my workstation. So I'm gonna go do that. I have rinsed my piece completely, got all of the soap out, did the vinegar bath, and then spun it dry. Let's look at how it is currently, which is still damp. This is what my piece looks like. You can see this was that funky scarf fabric. This is sari silk waste. My other upcycled fabrics. This is the habitai, which has a real fun pucker to it. And all of this is going to be a little more interesting once it's dry, especially the shiny bits. Any shiny bits will be more shiny once it's dry. So what I like to do now is block it. You might like to steam press yours, and you might even have decided to make yours bigger. But I like to get one of these foam rollers and put all the crinkles in mine and let it sit overnight. So here's what that looks like. Just going to put it over and scrunch it down. I like it to have texture. And you don't have to steam press it or do anything to, you know, to get this to stay. And that's what I love about this project is you can scrunch it and unscrunch it and refold it as you wear it. And this is just going to give it some interest and will also break up any real big blocks of lines that you have in your design. And you might decide to have yours completely geometric or completely solid, but this is how I'm going to leave mine to sit overnight and it'll be ready to wear tomorrow. Hey, that's it friends. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If it was or you got something out of it, we hope you leave your comments down below. We hope you'll subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video. We also share our tutorials live on our Wooly Wednesday broadcast, which is almost every week of the year. You can catch us on Facebook and also share in our group. I hope that if you make something from this tutorial that you'll share it with us in our group or drop us a line or even give us a call. So we wish you very happy felt and thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day.